Today we're going to talk about index match, which is a good alternative to VLOOKUP, especially when the lookup column isn't in the leftmost column of your lookup data set. So last week we talked about VLOOKUP and I talked about how the column that you're looking up, in this case it would be customer ID, for a VLOOKUP this would have to be in the leftmost column of the entire data set. If your lookup column or row, typically with marketing data we're dealing with columns, if it's not in the leftmost column then you either have to move it to the leftmost column or you have to use a combination of the index and the match functions. So in this case we have customer ID here and we have customer ID here. And what we're doing here is we're pretending that we used a custom variable now in Google Analytics Universal, they're now custom dimensions, to capture our visitor's customer ID when they log in. And that's very easy to do. And what we're doing is we are going to marry the data from Google Analytics where we have sessions, bounce rate, goal conversions, and revenue with data from their database. Now all of this data is completely fictitious. I just made up everything so none of these people are real. But what we're going to do is we're going to use that customer ID and pull in the last name, first name, email, gender, and age. We don't need anything else from this data set, let's just say. But because the customer ID isn't in the far left column in this data set, we can't use VLOOKUP. And you can't always move a column to be able to use VLOOKUP. And if we didn't need the last and first name, if we just needed the data over here, we could still do a VLOOKUP by just creating a named range or just grabbing this part of the data. You can check out the VLOOKUP video from last week to learn more. In fact, if you haven't watched it, you'll actually want to because there are going to be some more advanced techniques that I'm going to be using in this index match video, which because I already went over those techniques in the other video, I'm not going to go into detail on this one. We're just going to roll with it. So one thing to understand about index and match is index will return a value. So you give it the data that it needs and it scoops out whatever is in the cell that you identify. So let's say we want Faye's last name. Well, the index function is ultimately going to scoop that out and it's going to return the value of Blair. And if we did it for this cell, it's going to return Faye. Now the match works differently in that it returns the position. So it would tell us in this case that Faye is in row one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to return a five if we're using match to figure out the row number. And you'll see how these will work together quite copacetically. Okay, so we're going to do a couple things first. As I mentioned last week, I prefer to deal with named ranges rather than hard coding in arrays. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to create a named range just for this customer ID column. We're not going to grab the column heading here. We're just going to grab the values. And as I mentioned last week, we're just going to click in here and we'll call this customer ID. Next up, what we're going to do is create a named range for the entire data set. And let's call this customer table. Now watch what happens if I insert a row here. So I'll just right click here, choose insert, and let's say I just put in one one. If I go up here and select customer ID, notice how it envelops that new row of data. So it still goes to the end of that column and that's very, very convenient. Also, let's say we were to add a column here. So I'll right click and choose insert. And let's go in here and choose customer table. See how it involves that new column of data. If we scroll all the way across here, you'll see it still selects the entire data range. 
going to go ahead and get rid of these. And if you want to see where they are, you can just go up to the name manager. Unfortunately, the Mac doesn't have a name manager. And we'll just delete this one. We don't need it. So you can see we have customer ID and customer table. Perfect. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're going to do, just like I did in the last video, we're going to pull in these column headings. I try to hard code as few things as possible. And I think I said pull in the age. Now I don't need customer ID, so kind of lazy. I'm just going to delete that. Okay. So now let's jump in with our index function here. So we're going to put an equal sign to get this started. And I'm going to start to type in index. So the first thing it's going to ask for is an array. This is very much like a VLOOKUP, except with a VLOOKUP, first you select the lookup value. In this case, we're selecting the array first. So we can just start to type in customer and get to customer table. That's our entire array. Now, with the row number, we don't know what row number this customer ID is in. So we're going to use the match function to say look up. Let me just put a single quotation mark in here to turn that into text and just to kind of keep it in place so we don't have to start over. So what we're going to do with the match function is we're going to say, look up this customer ID here in this column here. And when you find it, that's going to be the row number that we're going to use to capture all of the data that we need that corresponds with that customer ID. So let's see how that plays out. And the match function, as you'll see, is very similar to a VLOOKUP, where it asks us for the lookup value, then the lookup array, and the match type. So very, very, very similar, borderline identical. So our lookup value is, oops, I'm going to press F2 to get into the mode that I need. And that's what we're going to look up, but we need to think ahead to when I drag this down and across, I want the row to update, so I don't want to lock that down, but I want it to stay in column B. So we're just going to cycle through these by pressing F4 until we get the dollar sign, which I picture to be a lock in front of the B, but not the 5, and this is Command-T on the Mac. So I'm just going to press it three times. That's what I want. Now, the lookup array is only going to be that column that we called customer ID. So we'll select that. The match type is just like what we saw with the VLOOKUP, and we'll just use zero. And the column number, just like we what we did with the VLOOKUP last week, I could hard code this in, and I could say, okay, well, I want column one, and then in the next column over, I'm going to want column two, et cetera, et cetera. But we want to make it dynamic. But one thing to keep in mind here is we're not exactly going straight across in this case. We're, go we're going to grab the last name, then the first name, but then we're going to skip over customer ID and go to email. So we need column one, then column two, and then column four. So let's see how this plays out. We'll just delete this. And again, if you haven't watched the VLOOKUP video, go ahead and watch that and this will make sense. Uh, so we're going to use the column function to make this dynamic. And since we want column 1, we can grab any cell in column A to get what we want. And it's fine to just keep that whole reference relative. It just means that when we drag it down, the rows will update. doesn't matter. When we drag it across, though, we also want 
that to update. We want it to return a 1 for last name, but then we want it to return a 2 for the first name, etc., etc. So we're going to close this up. And if we did this correctly, when we drag it down, everything should work. Now we're going to drag it across. Okay, everything looks good. We'll double check everything. And when we drag it across, you'll notice it's pulling in the wrong value. Well, what we're going to do is just very simply come up here and update this to D instead of C. And now this is going to grab what we want. And in this case, we can just drag it across and then drag it down. We'll just double click to send everything down. Now let's do some checking to make sure that this is returning what it should. So I'm just going to copy this and search for it in our customer ID. And this should return Rodolfo Coppola or Coppola. And sure enough, it did. Email 14. Let's check that. Yep. Mail age 43. Perfect. All right. Let's check one other. Let's check this last one. So we'll go in, copy this, come into the customer ID, paste. And this is Faye Blair, email 5, and she's 65. Faye Blair, email 5, and she's 65. Perfect. Everything that we needed. The last thing I'm going to do is go in here, and as I mentioned last week, I want to wrap this whole thing in an if error function. This just says, if there's an error, because I don't like to have those hash NA errors, what do you want to go in the cell? I'm just going to put a space in here. And then we'll just double click to send this down and we'll drag it over. Now this way, if this customer ID isn't in here, so let's find this one. again and let's change it to a one. Now when we come in here it's just going to return blanks but you could also use text to say something like no match and then when we drag it across and double click to send it down. It will return that. So there you go. This is a demonstration of how you can use index and match as a replacement for VLOOKUPs.